Hi, welcome back. My name is Elizabeth and I'm the designer and teacher at EBITDA Studio. And I have a whole lot of things to share today. I've been working on a lot of projects. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to be able to attend Quilt Canada. So I have a lot to share about that and a haul of some of the things that I got. So uh, I guess the first thing I'm going to share is an update on these embroidered quilt blocks that I've been making. And um, this comes from um, a group called Quilt Block Mania, and it's started by um, Carolyn Moore. Uh, she's the one who spearheaded that. And what it is, it's different um, quilting designers, and they each design a block, and you can get the pattern for that block free for a certain month. And then after the end of that month, then the designers do whatever they're gonna do with that. But during that month, it has to be available for free. And in each month, there is a general theme for the blocks that are gonna be available. And so there's a huge variety of what designers do with the themes that is given. So my blocks um, tend to be kind of traditional. And I decided to design my blocks so that they would go with each other. So if you get the block each month, then it will make an overall project when you get to the end of the year. So the theme in April was neighborhood. And this was the first block that I did. So for neighborhood, I went with the traditional log cabin block. And so I did this little uh, block. It has actually four mini log cabins into the 12 inch block. And there you can see, and then I did this embroidery on the corners. So you can see it's an embroidered um, traditional quilt block. So it's hand embroidered. Um, so this was the first one, this was for April. And so it was available for free in April, but if you're looking for this pattern now, you can find that on my shop. I still have all the patterns available. They're just not free after the first month. So then the next one in May, the theme was friendship. So I went with friendship star and a lot of people did friendship star variation. Uh, but to fit it for the embroidery, I did a little different friendship star than normal. Um, so this friendship star, you can see these pieces, the little corner pieces don't go all the way out to the outside. So I call this an inside friendship star because the block is, the star is inside the block. It's not your traditional friendship star. And then um, I call it loving friends because it has friendship. And then it has these hand embroidered hearts to embellish it. And I'm doing all of these blocks um, with this green and blue um, island boutique fabric and with this really nice uh, background fabric, which is also from island boutique. And then in June, the theme for June was places. So a lot of things you can do with places. I went well, with the traditional block, Ohio Star. So the place that I had was Ohio, even though I'm not from Ohio, to be honest, I've never been to Ohio, but I love the Ohio Star quilt block. And then I put this little flower embroidery in the corner. So when you see these blocks, you can kind of get an idea of what the theme and the style of them is going to be. So I have some more coming up for the rest of the months. Um, and they're all done with the same fabrics and the same kind of style, traditional block with embroidered embellishment. Um, and so um, if you like those, these are available on my website. And then um, check every month because every month there's a new block available for free. So I have nine planned out to go to the end of the year and I'm not sure if I'm going to go past the end of the year. Nine would be a nice size quilt. So I'm still thinking about how many more blocks I'm going to do in this style, um, but at least nine. So that would be enough you can do a three by three quilt or you can do um, a lot of things with that. So I'm really enjoying that project and I've got some great feedback about that. Um, something else I'm excited about is I have a new pattern coming out and this is called shooting stars and this is a uh, window hanging 
reversible patchwork stained glass window hanging and it has three different sizes because that's one thing that i've learned from people um that get my patterns and from feedback is people want to be able to make a certain size window hanging so this one has three sizes the small size is 12 inches by 23 inches so it's pretty small you can hang that in the middle of a window or if you have a tiny window and then there's medium and then the large size is 40 inches by 68 inches so that's very large so you could hang it in a sliding glass door or you could hang it it would cover a pretty large window and this one is made with two and a half inch strips so if you have um, two and a half inch strips that you have cut or if you have a jelly roll or scraps from a jelly roll then this would be a great uh, piece people often ask if they can use pre-cuts this is perfect for pre-cuts of course if you don't have pre-cuts you can also buy yardage for that that's not a problem um, but if you have scraps from a jelly roll that's a great idea uh, the other thing that I've been working on is um, these little Bargello uh, Christmas ornaments. So this is a Bargello that I've been doing with embroidery floss on Ada cloth. So that's traditionally not how Bargello is stitched, but I've been trying it and I've been really enjoying it. And I've been finishing up these little samples and I've been playing with different um, different color combinations. Um, here's one that I've stitched that I haven't put together. This one really reminds me of knitting. Like I can picture that as a mitten or as a sweater vest. Um, and I like that in the greens. There's three different shades of green in that one. Um, so I really like how these are turning out. So that is going to be for something coming up in the fall. I have a big Christmas project coming up in the fall. So for sure, if you enjoy hand embroidery and you like um, trying new techniques and you celebrate Christmas, then for sure you're gonna want to see what I have coming up in the fall because it's gonna be really exciting. So that's all I've been working on around here. But as I said, I was able to go to Quilt Canada and Quilt Canada is the biggest quilt show festival in Canada and it moves around the country. It's in a different place each year. Um, as you know, Canada is a very large country. So by moving it around, then people from different areas are able to be close to it to go. So this year it was in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is on the east coast of Canada. That is not close to where I live, but I was um, lucky enough to get a good price on a flight. So I flew out there um, to go to Quilt Canada. And there are people that go to it every year, no matter where it is. And so I met people from every province, almost every province of Ontario. And so it was fun to see so many people. There is uh, a number of quilt shows. There's the national jury show that you have to apply to get your quilt in. And then there are a lot of other um, local shows and competitions. So there were hundreds of quilts to see. And then there was a huge uh, merchant mall. And then there were also workshops going on at the same time. So I went by myself, which surprised a lot of people that I would go to that by myself. But I was able to meet so many people and I was taking workshops and stuff. And so um, I didn't mind going by myself. It was a really great experience. And so I guess the first thing I'll share at my haul from the Merchant Mall, because of course there's always great things. I was able to get this is a circle cutter. So it works like a compass, like you have a center point and then you can make circles of different areas, uh, different sizes. So I haven't even opened this yet to try it out, <coughs> but I'm looking forward to uh, using this. Then I got a couple of embroidery kits and I was kind of curious to see how um, people package their kits and what came in it. 
So the first one, this is a kit from a Canadian company called Hook, Line and Tinker. Oh, it's on this side, Hook, Line and Tinker. And I love the packaging. Um, it's like this brown with printed in white. And the nice thing with her packaging is the packaging was the same for every single pattern. It's the same box. And then this is just a sticker on top. And then it has this sticker. So that would be really uh, efficient and cost effective for a manufacturer because it's only one package for every product. And then it's just the sticker identifies the specific product. So she had a whole bunch of different embroidery projects. I had a really hard time deciding, but I ended up going with this red cardinal. It looked really nice. So I'm just going to open and see what's in here. So it comes with a hoop and then a little envelope, happy stitching, hook, line, and tinker. Hook, line, and tinker is, um, I believe it is a, a company from the East Coast. Um, it has the stitching um, chart and it has some instructions. Oh, I, and I love the instructions, just all the graphics on everything. It's just really, uh, really cute. Um, more instructions and then here's the needle and the printed design so it comes with the printed design and then embroidery floss oh and this floss even has her branding on it hook line and tinker floss so that's really interesting kind of fun so I'm looking forward to doing that that's going to be a fun um, cute little project to do and then you can finish it uh, right in the hoop. So that looks really nice. So yeah, the website for that is, doesn't have the website on there, but uh, Instagram, Facebook, at Hookline Tinker. So not uh, Sinker, but Tinker, Hookline Tinker. So I'm sure if you Google it, you can find a website or it's on Facebook and Instagram, at Hookline Tinker. And then uh, the other one I got, this was actually from a quilt shop. So um, Hookline Tinker, she had her own booth and that's all it was, was all her embroidery kits. This is an embroidery kit I got at a um, quilt shop. And so she had fabric and a bunch of other things and this kit. So this is interesting packaging because it's this little kind of like mini pizza box and then the sticker is the label. So there's no printed packaging, just a sticker. So that's a really good idea. And um, it's a kit, it includes a hoop, fabric, floss, needle, and um, I really like this floral. I thought that was really pretty. So when I open it up, then it has this little kit. So here's the um, details and it has the floss in there. It has a little card getting started, ready for your next project. And oh, this comes with the fabric is already in the hoop. So there it is, fabrics in the hoop and you can just begin stitching. So I assume this has the stitch diagram and the has the floss that's DMC floss and I love those colors great colors and here's a needle oh that's a cute way to do the needle if this is card and then just washi tape and the stitch guide is on the back of it so this um, is the stitch guide and the picture of the finished product so that is a nice little way to package that. I guess theoretically you could have this with the floss and the fabric without the hoop and it would be just in this little bag. Um, but this is a beautiful looking kit. 
I'm excited to try that. So yeah, both of those are nice kits. This is from And Other Adventures Embroidery Co. And the website, and other adventures co dot com and this is the meadow embroidery kit so this looks like it will be fun to do as well looking forward to that um then i got this is a scrap tape from the gypsy quilter and i got five inches wide so this is basically um like a long tape and you can do uh scrap crumb quilting or strip quilting and then it's five inches wide you can cut the pieces to the length that you want and then you don't have to take it out so it's similar to if you were doing um strip piecing on um like strips of paper or people some people use old phone books or you can use adding machine tape except that this you don't have to take out. If it's paper, you would want to take it out. So I've never tried this before, but I've seen a lot and I thought five inches might be a good size to dry it out because then you can work that into bigger blocks. So uh, I'm looking forward to trying that project out. Then uh, Wonderful. I spent a lot of time at the Wonderful booth, as you can probably guess. I love thread, all different kinds of thread. So Wonderful has so many different kinds of thread for uh, machine quilting, machine embroidery, hand embroidery, every kind of thread. And um, they also were running um, little hands-on uh, workshops or ways to try it out. So I did a couple of those. This one is a little wool embroidery bookmark. So that was fun to do. I can get that. Um, and these little wool circles were already fused onto the background. And then we got a couple of um, little sample cards with some of their thread. And then we were able to stitch with it right there. So um, this was really fun little project. Then the other project, this was kind of funny. Um, this was to try out their threads that are called Razzle and Dazzle. So as you can see, this has um, some a bit of glitter in it. And for this one, we're making a little bag. Oh, there's Razzle. Razzle, it doesn't have the same glitter, but it does have a special sheen. So these were the threads we were trying out. Um, so for this one, we're making a little uh, drawstring bag. So we got a piece like this and we're just making rows of stitches um, up and down. So I started with uh, this, yeah, this one I did first and then we're working out in parallel lines. And I started doing this pink line and as you can see, it is not a straight line at all. It is kind of wavy and crooked and I wasn't happy with that. And so after a few minutes, I thought, I am going to wait and I'm going to do this somewhere when I can mark the straight lines on so that it can be straight. And it was kind of funny because the uh, teacher who was doing the demo, she said, it's fine. Just let go of your perfection and um, just go with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's funny because that is exactly what I would say if I was a teacher and I was teaching something. I would say exactly that thing. And yet when those words are coming back to me, it's like, no, I'm going to wait to some, to uh, go somewhere where I can uh, mark lines on and then it will be in straight lines. Um, I just couldn't uh, do that. And you'll find out in a minute why I think why I couldn't do it, but wonderful. I uh, loved working with this thread. So, I did buy a bunch of thread. Uh, two things that I got, these ones are more tools than threads, but there is Rinse and Gone and Iron Infuse. So this one is thread you can stitch on and then it works like fusible. So you can iron it 
and it will fuse your things together. Rinse and gone, you can stitch and then uh, press it. And then when you spritz it with water, it will come apart. So there's a few different things you can do with that. Uh, we had a little demo that she showed some things and the demo was enough to sell me on the product. So um, I'm sure if you uh, Google Wonderful, you can see examples of how to use that thread, but I'm looking forward to using that as a tool. And then I did get some um, embroidery thread as well for decorative uh, spots. So this is Razzle. So this is the um, thread. It has that kind of shiny sheen to it. It's not quite dazzle, but I got this collection of colors. And then I did get some, I guess a pearl cotton. I got this little collection. Um, so uh, that I'm looking forward to using. So as I was sitting there working on the sample, I'm like, that's not a straight line. My stitches aren't exactly even. I'm going to wait until I can do this later. Um, and I was talking to people. Then I realized, ah, I knew why I was having a really hard time with that. And that was because the day before I took a full day workshop and the workshop that I took was on Sashiko. And I've never done Sashiko before, but I loved it. So this workshop was from, by uh, Kate Ward from Zen Stitching, was a teacher. Uh, she was an excellent instructor. I learned a lot from her. So Sashiko is, it's all, it's kind of Japanese stitching, but it's all running stitch. And the one, Thing with Sashiko is it has to be even. You want your stitches to be the same size, the same number in every spot. So for example, um, in these ones here, I knew that in this quarter circle, there was going to be six stitches. And so in every quarter circle, there are six stitches. When I got down here, quarter circles again, um, six stitches. And then down here, quarter circle, six stitches so it is very even and balanced and you're stitching on a line so on thursday no on friday i was doing this for the whole entire day then the next day i get to this i'm like this is not a straight line i think i still have a lot of sashiko on my mind so i do love sashiko this really does fit with my personality follow a line, be even and straight. So this is a little piece that I made. It has four different designs on this little cloth. So I'm looking forward to finishing that off. The other trick that Kate showed us that it blew everybody's mind. Um, when you buy Sashiko thread, it comes in little uh, things like this. So I did also pick up Sashiko thread in the, um, in the vendor vendor hall and she showed us how you can open the thread and then cut it so instead of um, wrestling with this little skein you can turn it into this little braid uh, this is great for a lot of reasons um, you're not wrestling with the skein you're not trying to wrap it up into a little ball or something like that and each of these pieces is already cut to the perfect length that you're going to stitch with. So when you need a new thread, you can just pull one from the top of the braid and pull it out. And there you're ready to begin stitching and the pull braid stays intact. So um, not only is that super convenient, but it's perfect if you're going to be stitching on an airplane because then you don't have to worry about cutting the thread. Your thread is already cut to the length that you want to stitch with. So I don't think that would be something you can apply to embroidery floss because embroidery floss, you don't always want the same length of thread um, and you're working with different numbers of strands. But for Sasha coat, this is a great trick tip. So if you want to see how to prepare your thread like this, I think Kate has a video so check out Zen Stitching and she has a, a video of how to turn this 
into this. And that is very worthwhile. And so obviously you can see I have some more thread here and I also got some more fabric. So I'm really excited to try some more Sashiko projects. I like, um, I like how it looks and it's very relaxing. Um, Kate's thing is called Zen stitching. So Zen might be the right word to it. It's relaxing and meditative to do the repetitive stitching. And I think it looks beautiful. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one finished and to see how it holds up to use uh, because I think that's a stitching that I will use in everyday life. Um, uh, also in our workshop, everybody in the workshop got a little spool of Orifil thread. So that was really nice to see. And I just have a couple of other things that I got at the uh, Northcott booth, they had spin the wheel, get a prize. So I got a fat quarter, which is nice. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, there was a fat quarter bundle that you could have got as prize. But the two people in front of me both got a fat quarter bundle. So um, it wasn't three in a row. I got this fat quarter, which is a beautiful poppy fabric. Um, I really like that. Um, and I'll be totally honest. I didn't buy any fabric other than this because I have a lot of fabric and I'm trying to cut back on buying fabric. So it was okay to not get <clears throat> a fat quarter bundle from them. And then <clears throat> the last thing I got is this little thing. It's called a dude. Um, and this, this was, I came up as a topic in a workshop I was teaching last year and I began to think maybe I had imagined it because I mentioned it in a workshop. Nobody knew what I was talking about. I tried to Google it and I couldn't find it because I didn't remember the name. It's a quilting dude. And I was like, it's this little guy. Um, but what it is, it's just for doing quick measurements because you can see the head is one inch. This leg is three quarter inch, half inch, and then one quarter inch and eighth inch. So anytime if you need to do a quick measurement of how much something is you're trying to mark, then this little dude is um, a great option. It's made with aluminum and they're sold by Silly Moon Quilting Company, which is also um, a Canadian company made in Canada. That's a great thing to see. Um, so it's a good little tool to um, have anytime you need a quick uh, reference for measuring. Um, so uh, this is a little fun too. It has a hole in it so you could hang it on a, a keychain or a necklace, whatever. Um, so I think this is going to be a great, useful little tool to have around. And if you were in that workshop with me where I was trying to say, yeah, there's this little guy you can get. This is what it is. It's not a little guy. It's a little dude. Um, so yet yeah, overall, Quilt Canada was great. I had such a good time. Um, Halifax is a beautiful city. If you've never been there, the only thing really that I did that I kind of regretted and was a bit of a mistake is when I was coming from the airport, I um, took the bus. There's a bus, a city bus that comes from the airport right downtown, right to where my hotel was. And so the bus, first of all, stopped at the um, bus terminal and then a bunch of people were getting off and the driver said, if you're going around the corner to the Duke Street um, stop, then just stay on the bus and you can get off there or you can get off here. And so I knew on the map that my hotel, it was closer to the Duke Street stop, but it was right around the corner. And by then I've been sitting on the plane, sitting on the bus, sitting at the airport. So I thought, oh, it'll be nice to stretch my legs. So I will get off here. So I got up there and it was, it's not far to my hotel, but what I forgot was Halifax has a harbor in the bottom and then it's all uphill to where the Citadel is. And my hotel was up at, on that main road at the top of the hill. So getting off in the terminal, it wasn't a long walk, but the road was a 45 degree angle, which is not bad 
except if you're pulling your suitcase and everything with you. So I was going right up that hill. And if I'd stayed on the bus, I would have had a ride up the hill. Um, and so that was the biggest thing that went wrong. And so if that's the biggest problem that you have is that you have to drag your suitcase up a hill, that is a pretty good trip. So I was really um, glad that I was able to go to it. Uh, next year, Quilt Canada is going to be in Edmonton, which is in the west side of Canada. So it's very far from Halifax. It's the other side and even further away from me. Um, I am going to be going to that. Uh, I will have a um, announcement later. I can't really say right now, but I am looking forward to going to Quilt Canada in Edmonton. So if you're going to be going to Edmonton, uh, you can see me there and I would love to meet up with you. Um, so that is all I've been doing. I mean, I've been pretty busy. So um, thanks for sticking around for this uh, little catch up. If you have any questions about any of these things I shared, then be sure to ask a question and I will answer and I will put links to everything in the description. So um, have a great week and happy stitching and working on your project. Thanks for stopping by.